do you want to know how to add your signature direct to your med threes in system one and more importantly figure out how you can send that to the patient within system one we're going to cover that right now in this episode let's tech enhance your primary care and learning this is the first time we're meeting. I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I'm supporting you with technology-enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can add your signature to System 1, and more importantly, their new communication annex, which basically means you can send that Med 3, as well as many other things, direct to the patient from System 1. This is absolutely awesome. Let's get straight to it, shall we? The first thing you will need is a digital image of your signature. Now, there's various different ways you can do this. Probably the simplest and easiest way to do this is simply take a photo of your signature, email it to yourself on your nhs.email address, and then stick it onto your computer that you're going to be using System 1 from. And in particular, you need to resize it. We don't have any details as to how big that signature needs to be, but the one I've been using is 400 pixels by 100 pixels, and that works perfectly well. How can you resize it? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could use MS Paint that's probably on your computer and simply create a paint document and then simply put your signature on top and resize it using MS Paint and make sure you save it as a JPEG file. I'll make it quite a small file, which is good. Alternately, you can use my favorite tool, which is Canva, which allows you to create images on any particular size. And then again, remember to download it as a JPEG file. Once you've got that JPEG file, you then need to add it to System 1. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So this is my System 1 screen. And as you can see, we can have a little look right here. You need to go to Setup tab at the top and then click on Users and Policies and then go to Staff, Organization and Setup. Once you've done that, find your name and then simply select it on the clinical role that you would normally work with and then click on Amend, which is just a little bit above those names. When you do that, it'll then bring up various different tabs and go straight to the additional details one, which is the one on the far right. When you see the signature image folder, click on that, and then you'll see all the various different images that are stored in your system one. You then need to add your signature. Simply click on add and then find your signature. So mine is just there. As you can see, relatively small and click OK. It will then tell you the size of the image and everything else along with it. So mine's 17.3 kilobytes. As I said, 400 odd pixels by 100 pixels. Click OK, and then it will add your signature onto the repository for System 1. You then select it and then click OK. That's now added your signature to System 1. I'd click OK to save it and then go back in and then delete the image of your signature. The reason for doing that is twofold. Number one, you don't want somebody else using your signature. Number two, there's a limited size capacity of the files that you can store on system one, and you will pretty quickly hit that limit unless you've already had it increased. So to delete that image, the best way to do that is go into a separate one. So go into the staff image one, click on that, and then find your signature, select it, and then click on delete. When you do that, that will remove the image from the repository, but it will still stay on your signature for your Med3. So don't worry about that. I'm not gonna do that right now though. So by doing that, that means that on your profile that you sign your Med3s with, your signature will now be added to various documents, including the Med3s that you sign. Awesome. So if all that let you do was add your signature, that in itself would be an amazing piece of information. However, there's another update that's come through with System 1 that is just as awesome, if not even more, and that's their new communication annex. What is that? Well, this is System 1's method of you being able to send messages back and forth to patients, including documents, basically and potentially replacing things like Accurix, MJOG, and other SMS profiles. Yeah, it really does that, and it's built into System 1. Shall we have a look? So this is our test patient, Minnie Mouse, and I'm going to send her a Med3. Let's have a little look, shall we? So let's give Minnie a Med3. Let's go down and click New Med3, Unfit, and let's say this is due to cheese exhaustion. And then simply we'll put that for a month. I think that's more than enough time for her to have Med3. And there we go. We're all done. And as you can see right here at the bottom, we've now got a couple of options. We can either print the Med3, which has always been there, 
or we can send it to the patient electronically. And when you do that, you can then click OK, print or send electronically. Let's do that, shall we? And this is what the communication annex looks like that opens up directly when you want to send it. Gives you various options of how you want to send the Med3. So you can either send it by email if you have an email address in there, mobile number, or through AirMid, which is System One's inbuilt app that they can use. You then can change the preferred contact method for the patient. So at the moment, this is set to SMS, and you can see that the consent has already been recorded. If you needed to change that or wanted to, you click on the green telephone bar. And as you can see, you're brought up to the communications tab that allows you to change various details from that point. I'm going to cancel that there. Then you can send a message. You can choose the route. So at the moment, it's set default to SMS. Alternately, you can send an email or send an AirMid notification if you want to. And then you can even then select a preset. So what type of messages do you want to send? Well, I'm sending a Med3, so let's send the Med3 preset. You could, if you wanted to, allow the patient to reply. This would be really useful for sending photos or that kind of thing back and forth with the patient so you can get that information. And it will then include a link to the Med3 and send that through to the patient. Now, it's not going to work when I do it because this is a test patient, but simply put, you click send. And then when you save the record, it will then send that across to the patient. It also documents this in the notes for you. So if we want to have a look at that Med3 that I've created for Minnie Mouse, if we go to view Med3, and as you can see, Minnie Mouse test patient, cheese exhaustion, my signature included all done and dusted, and that will stay there until I decide to change that signature. And that's the Med3. When you save the record, it will save that communication in the record itself. Unfortunately, it's not going to work here because this is a test patient, so it's not going to send the message and therefore it won't save it for you, but it does work with real patients. And I know many practices already are finding this really useful and effective way of communicating with patients. And that's it. Nice and simple, a new communication method that you can use with sending information to patients. And it doesn't just have to be with Med3s. The communication annex can be added to your toolbar so you can use it with any form of interaction with patients, just like you would with other platforms that we use in System 1, like Acurix, MJOG, and other kind of platforms. So this looks amazing. And the fact that it links with directly with emails and the AirMid app as well is pretty awesome and counts towards that SMS limit that you have within System 1. It is important to note that the SMS character limit is capped at 306 characters, and that's a little bit less compared to platforms like Acurix, which is 566 characters, or MJOG, which uses smart messaging, so technically they don't even have a limit. But it's important to note that's still plenty to do various things. Just remember to keep those templates short and brief so you don't go over the character limit. If you have found this episode useful, definitely leave a like down below. Let me know you've enjoyed this content and definitely make sure you check out this video right here, which is going to take you to our full System 1 update that's coming up in the next few days and goes through this in so much more detail and your opportunity to have your questions answered about the new communications annex. And as always, EGP learners, we're here to help tech enhance your primary care and learning. And we'll catch you in the next episode.